Rider number eight, Casey Brown. Three, two, one. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. How's it going? It's working. Is it working or no? No. I'm hopeless with technology. Maybe they're not hooked to your computer now. Go into settings and then go to Bluetooth. See, now you muted yourself. Test, test, AirPods. Sick. All right. Nice. Proving grounds. Yeah. It's going to be sick. Oh yeah. Are you stoked to be coming back? Yeah, I'm really hyped. It's been, a, been too long. Watching you ride the practice was, that was what was up for me. Like, all right, we've got Casey Brown, the only woman competing in this contest against all the pro men. Like that was a big moment where you're kind of just like shoving off on your own and just totally putting yourself out there. I was riding practice with you. I knew where you were at. Like you had that course handled, like no problem. And then the fact that the only thing that people were able to see was when, you know, you crashed in your run. <laughs> I know. And like, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. It was killing me because if you weren't there, you wouldn't yeah. know how, like, how no problem you had that course. Walk me through, like, the stuff that people didn't see from Proving Grounds 2019. Yeah, I mean, the first day was pretty nerve-wracking, like, seeing the guys out there, like, kind of ticking things off but also some of the guys were super nervous of the mandatory features and I was like all right if the guys are nervous for this feature like that's pretty heavy <laughs> right so I um I knew that I had to do those features like the top ones and uh I just I feel like that was one of the earlier sessions that I had was on those top couple of drops I was like well these things need to be ticked off I probably won't sleep at night that good if I don't take them off sooner <laughs> than later. So I may as well just try them now. It's got to be done. Go for it. Go oh, for it, KGM. and the hardest gear. What do you want to watch first now that we're just like talking about it and picturing it? Ooh, surprise me. Here's some footy. <laughs> Talk me through some of these features. Oh yeah, that first feature was a little squirrel catcher. Oh yeah, so that first big drop is like pretty intimidating. It's like you kind of have to have the perfect speed for it. Then there's this jump. That one took a while for me to get over just because the running's so techy. You led me off of this thing the first time. I had so much trust. <laughs> just calculating the speed for that thing because you're going uphill for so long that thing like you grease at that yeah, practice like, run that one was like so nerve-wracking it's just completely blind and then you just go off the end like you don't see the landing until you're in the air so yeah so good. And then here's, here's some final POV. thanks all your help this week yeah, I had so much support from the guys. It was awesome. The wind down there. Two to four miles an hour. Up to It's okay. Two to four and it's uphill. But that's miles, not kilometers. Okay. <laughs> Which, whatever that math had to Yeah, that was pretty nerve wracking actually, just like being there with all that wind. Rider number eight, Casey Brown. Three, two, one. That's a pretty decent wind, and it was like very directional. Yeah, because I had a bit of a tailwind at the top end, and then as soon as I went around that 180 berm, yeah, this part was all right. Didn't get didn't get too much wind in my riding there. And then this, I had like I noticed a big tailwind. I was like, oh, okay, like that's a pretty hefty tailwind. Saw the flags. I was like, yeah, I got a tailwind. I'm like, oh man, my speed is gone. <laughs> I have nothing left. Hit the deck. Oh yeah. Reliving some good memories, some memories that, you know, are could fall into a different category than good. That was like an AC separation. What was it? Collarbone break? AC, SC, collarbone break. Like everything. I had a plate, I, yeah, I had a plate in my collarbone and that was the third time I'd broken it with the plate in. So it was like the last draw, both the joints just like popped out. 
And then we had to like pan it back to Canada. What does it mean to you to look back to those runs two years ago and know that that's a big reason why we have uh, a women's category right now? And I'm sure when you're on your way back to Canada, you were frustrated with the crash and the injury. But now in hindsight, are you a little bit proud of yourself for going out there and being vulnerable and, and now looking at what it's led to having a full women's category for the 2021 event? What does that feel like? Yeah, I'm so stoked that the made it a full category because that's exactly what I was hoping for. I was like, we need to build the side of the sport. How do we do that? You just need to put yourself out there and take some risks and hopefully it pays off. And in this case, I feel like it totally has. Maybe I'm wrong, but but I'm going to ask you, is this like the first top to bottom, like full on women's free ride contest where it's going to be like first, second, third place? And I think so. Yeah. Because everything that's happened prior to this has not been a contest. That's so good. There's a lot of momentum yeah. right yeah. now, isn't there? Yeah. There's so many young, young girls coming up that just like, if we give them the tools that they need, it'll like grow the sport so much on that side. And that's yes. what we're all trying to do. We're just trying to hype it up. I'm down with that. Speaking of tools that they need, check it out. Let's see which direction I have to turn this thing. My daughter's bike. Look at that. Oh, no way. Holy, <laughs> she must be getting big. You're probably no going to see it before we finish this because the odds of her like just not coming out here are pretty slim. <laughs> Busting in. Proving Grounds is totally open for interpretation. Like this event is the first one, but I know talking with Barber, he wants it to be super athlete driven and with a focus on filling a gap in the sport between slope style and rampage, there's all this middle ground. There's so many riders who have strengths that fit in between those categories. And, uh, you know, would you be stoked if this turned into some kind of a series in the future? And uh, obviously having the women's category for the first time at this year's event, maybe there could be women's categories at all the future proving grounds. Um, do you want to say hi to Casey? Here, you put this one in. Uh, do you remember Casey, Chloe? Let's see. Yep. Which one? Oh, it's my right. Hi. Your <laughs> <laughs> bike is awesome. Okay, have fun, kid. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Um, so, yeah, what are your thoughts on it? And we could turn this into a series, and it wouldn't have to all fit the same mold of what this course looks like. It could just be anything, you know, where it's here's our zone on this day with these group of riders who are known to be proving grounds athletes and who's going to do the best on this yeah. type of course on, on this day. Um, is that an exciting prospect for you? That would be so cool. That would be like, that'd be pretty huge for free ride. I mean, yeah, that would be so sick. Yay. Well, hopefully that happens. We're going to do all we can to make this event as killer as possible. And we wouldn't be able to do it without the top riders like yourself deciding to accept that invitation and come out here. Prineville, Oregon Dirt Park, September 10th and 11th. It's going to be amazing. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk. I can't wait to see you here in Oregon for Proving Grounds. Thanks, Cam. Hey. All right. Bye, Casey. Get some <laughs> yeah. good sleep. Thanks right. so much. Have a good one, Cam. Enjoy you your too. day. Later. <laughs> Bye.